Good morning. As I've said before, I love nature. And I find myself, when I do guided meditations uh, two or three days a week uh, with other people, I invariably take us to some sunny, warm place with water. <laughs> so <laughs> that can't be <laughs> that can't be Indiana because it's not really <laughs> sunny and warm right now, and there is not as much water as there was when I was growing up. I love nature. I feel very connected to the earth when I'm out hiking in the woods, uh, except for one time when I was terrified. But mostly it's been good, 99.9%, .9%, you know, going, uh, there's a state park not far from where I grew up uh, with cliffs. And uh, it was formed by glacial action. And so you can actually go uh, you know, and repel down the cliffs. And it's really a spectacular, beautiful place. And there's water, yes. Water really makes it for me. All of the days that I have spent growing up on the water, and yes, there were those annoying lake flies that came around every May. <laughs> Crazy. If you don't know what those are, Google that because those are some crazy ass bugs, like an inch long, and they will literally like cover your house if you live close enough to the lake. And then, you know, ten days later they're all dead. And it's over until the next <laughs> until the next May. I remember all the times that I would watch the sunrise over the lake. This was a big lake, 60 miles by 30 miles across. The glow of the night sky as, it, you know, day starts to arrive. There is a very reverent pause in all created things. As even the birds and wildlife and trees seem to hold their breath for a moment as the sun pops over the horizon. If you haven't ever been out <clears throat> in nature to watch the sun actually come up, man, you've missed something pretty spectacular. It's impossible not to believe in God in that powerful spiritual moment. And then watching as the sun rises over the horizon, sparkling on the water, and I remember as a kid thinking I could always tell what was going to happen weather-wise if the lake was perfectly still early morning with no waves at all. It was going to be a really spectacularly beautiful day. And you could tell by the waves and whatnot what was going to happen. And if everything was churned up from the bottom and the water wasn't as clear as normal, you knew that something was coming, some kind of a storm or something. There's also that, that shift of the breeze. So in the morning, <clears throat> as you're standing on the lake shore facing east, as soon as the sun comes up, the breeze starts to move from the water to the land. And if you are lucky enough to be there at sunset, when the sun sets behind you, there is a shift in the direction of the breeze and suddenly the breeze is coming from behind you and blowing back out over the water. It's amazingly beautiful. <clears throat> There's a, an energy and a balance there. To go fishing in such a situation is absolutely a spiritual practice. So, so to be sure, God is to be found in nature. <clears throat> but there's even more power, I think, in church buildings. 
A few years ago, when I was in the habit of taking middle school students to France, we were on a long 22-day tour, which is, is a long time with, with seventh and eighth graders. Oh my goodness. If you can survive that without becoming an alcoholic, you're probably golden. <laughs> you're going to be just fine. <clears throat> it was great, but it requires a lot of energy and a lot of creativity. So we were touring the whole country that particular summer. <clears throat> and we ended up uh, in the city of Amboise. And Amboise is, you know, it's in the Loire Valley. It's beautiful. There's a beautiful, uh, the, the uh, Chateau Royal d'Amboise is there where uh, Leonardo da Vinci is buried. There's a statue of him up top. It's just uh, damn spectacular, right? The Loire River is there. Um, we toured a wine, uh, a winery, um, and the vintner uh, gave us a tour and showed us where they store all of the, the champagne, which are in caves underground that were dug by Julius Caesar's men. I mean, we're talking some old stuff here. Well, come Sunday, as was my habit, I offered to take <clears throat> the Catholic kids to Mass, those who wanted to go, or non-Catholic kids, too, who just wanted to go. And there was a rather uh, ancient church there in Amboise, and I don't remember the name. It was probably another Saint Denis, Saint Denis, because that's the first Christian uh, martyr in, in France. And so it was probably that, but I don't know for sure. Anyway, so we go, <clears throat> and the first thing I notice is there's a schedule posted on the door of the church. There's only mass there once a month because of the critical priest shortage. And so this, this priest apparently has four congregations that he's tending to once a month. Yikes. What a job that must be. So <clears throat> we, go, we go in for Mass. And um, the priest is in the, in the back, in the narthex. And, and uh, so I go over and introduce myself and explain that we are, you know, the touristes américains. And so uh, as Mass begins, he gives us a warm welcome. Uh, of course, all in French. I'm not sure the students understood uh, the whole thing there. But <clears throat> as Mass Proceeds, you know, mass is mass. Um, I could see that even my kind of rebellious students were like emotionally moved by it. The organ was fantastic. This is a building built, you know, in the first millennium. So there are tombs off to the side. Uh, it's, it's not what you would call a, a spectacularly beautiful church because it's pre-Gothic, so there's not, you know, there's not any stained glass really to boast about. It's the arched, small windows, kind of dark uh, inside, um, that Romanesque style, if you know what I'm talking about. But there were monuments and little side altars and tombs built into the, the rough-hewn places and the little side transepts that were, it was really powerful, really powerful. And so here we are, we're doing our thing and mass is over and my students aren't ready to go yet. They just want to stay there and, and just sit. And several of them are crying on this particular Sunday. And so of course I, you know, came up to them and sat next to them and said, are you okay? And I remember them telling me, I hate church. I hate church. I go to St. Elizabeth Ann. That's a, uh, a very modern, um, ultra conservative, I would say, rich white people church 
in the suburbs here. They said, I hate church. I find any reason to skip and not go on Sundays. If church were like this, though, I would go every single Sunday. And I've thought about that. And I said to them, even at the time, it's because a church is more than the experience of worship. This place is ancient. It comes from the first millennium. It is, you know, churches are more than just the stone and the glass. This very church in which we were sitting had seen innumerable invasions and plagues and devastation. It had seen the Hundred Years' War and all kinds of technological revolutions. The way churches were built, the way the stones were cut, the way the windows were put together. Revolutions in music. Revolutions in technology and, and medicine. And it had seen the birth of the scientific era in the 17th century and all of the theological differences and, and evolutions and transformations over a thousand years. That church had withstood the French Revolution and all of the philosophical underpinnings that came with the Enlightenment. It had stood there during World Wars One and Two, it had survived the Hitler occupation of France. The church had stood there in periods of instability and terror and fear and death, and it had stood there in periods of grace and healing and victory. That, that is why there is a power in the building itself. The energy of all those generations of people who came to that place, some of them celebrating, some of them getting married, some of them burying their parents and children, some of them crying, some of them laughing, some of them filled with gratitude, all of that remains. The stones themselves carry the energy and the residual prayers of all those who have come to that place to ask and beg for guidance or to thank God for having preserved them one more day. My feeling is this. We live in an evolutionary universe since the moment of the Big Bang. Everything is evolving, becoming more complex. Think of all the medical technology that allows some of us to even be here in the present moment. In another era, I would not be alive. I would have died when my appendix burst when I was 17. The vaccinations that we have received. <clears throat> this is all part of our evolution as a species. And in all of it, the beauty of God is being revealed. So yes, raw nature is beautiful. I get it. I celebrate it. I pray there. I worship there. But even more beautiful is a building like a church because human beings have mindfully, purposefully transformed natural materials like limestone into, into blocks, into columns and, and carvings and, and archways and intricate patterns. They put their humanity, in other words, into an inanimate 
substance. And so now it's more than a block of limestone. It is a testament to faith and to belief that no matter what, we will triumph. Simple things in nature, blocks of stone pulled out of the earth, carved, transformed, transfigured, the very sand on the beaches, collected, heated, transformed into the many colors of glass that make the stained glass windows. That's why there's power in a church building because it's beyond just the raw creation. It is, in fact, the very stones crying out as a, a testimony to the enduring power of the human spirit and its evolution. So I invite you, go to church. <laughs> Check out a church building somewhere. And I get it. In this country, we don't have anything that is a thousand years old. But we do have buildings where people bring their prayers and their, and their tears and their laughter and their celebrations and their, and their sad farewells and all of that. Just sit quietly sometime in any church and you'll feel what I'm talking about. It's pretty real. Let's pray. Gracious God, open our hearts today to the beauty of your created world. But let us also appreciate the beauty that human beings bring to this world. The way we transform your raw materials into saving devices and technologies, monuments of beauty and grace. And help us today in gratitude to find a way to evolve ourselves into the next better version of ourselves so that with all creation we might stand in your presence and gratefully, gratefully offer our praise. Amen. Happy Friday. <laughs>